This video is surrounding exception handling in C Sharp. I've already created the project and we're calling this one exception handling. So you can pause right here, create the project and resume once you have done that. Now, as an exception is a problem that arises during the execution of a program and it is not unique to C Sharp. It is pretty much in every single programming language. It's usually a response to, you know, invalid input or undesirable conditions for an operation. So you may have encountered maybe at the ABM where they asked you to insert your selection and you press one when you know you can't press one, but you press one. And then if you see a big nasty error screen, then that means their exception handling was probably poor because they didn't factor in that this could potentially happen. Now, when you're writing your application, you are the one who is determining the input and the you know the output and you want more importantly you know the desired input so there are situations that you can foresee a potential error and that's what exception handling is all about you're going to write your code in a what we call defensive manner so that you say that under these circumstances don't throw a nasty error don't exit the program but show the user a nice error message to say hey you know you did something wrong when it could have been a potentially fatal operation for your program. So I've added some notes to this code file about the try, catch, finally, and throw keywords, all of which are keywords used when we're talking about exception handling. Now the try basically is just a block that says, I'm going to try this operation. I'm going to try and do this. The catch basically says, catch any error, like stop, and check if there's any error after you tried it. If there's any error, then I want to take some action. The finally basically says that, okay, after we tried it and maybe something was caught, maybe something was not caught, I'm still going to do this operation anyway. And then the throw is a keyword that we use to end the execution. So we sometimes in programming, you would try something and then you catch a particular kind of exception and then you the programmer know that if this exception is ever caught that is going to be you know detrimental to whatever operation is about to happen so you can manually throw the the, the program out as in when you do throw it will literally throw the error to the screen and exit the program all right, so let's start this little adventure with a small program. I wrote it already so you can just pause and write it off yourself. Um, so we're just accepting two numbers. We're doing console right line, enter your first number, and then I'm parsing my integer in a different method. So we would have done convert dot to int 32. Now I'm doing it another way where there's actually a function inside of the int data type called int dot parse. And then it works pretty much the same way, except the convert to in 32 has a wider range than the dot parse. But for the purpose of this example, we can just use the dot parse. So we're asking the user for two numbers, and then we're going to do some division, and then we're going to display the result. Now, I'm going to run this program the first time, and then we're going to see that 10 divided by two is going to be five. And that's perfect. And we know that, okay, our application works. Now you're probably saying, okay, that's straightforward. That's standard. That's what was expected. What is the moral of the story? So let's execute this again. And then this time I'm going to do something that I know is going to throw an exception. So I'm going to say 10 divided by zero. And anybody who knows math knows that there's no division by zero. Now look at what Visual Studio does when I press enter it throws what we call an exception. So you see exception unhandled. They're telling us that the, this video, this lesson is called exception handling. And they're telling us that this exception was unhandled. System dot divide by zero exception, attempted to divide by zero. So they tell you what the exception was. So once again, there are certain situations under which your program is just going to freak out because those operations are illegal, all right? So even in programming, even though we're telling the computer to do it, the computer cannot divide by zero. So exception handling would allow us, and so when it's in this state, we have to just continue in Visual Studio and then it will get back to the state where we can start writing code again. And now we'll have to write a block that says, let me handle the exception. So to start off, we try. So I can just say try and then open with curly braces. 
and then I'm going to try an operation. So I can't just have try and empty because you notice that Visual Studio is telling me that it's incomplete. So what am I going to try? I don't need to try the input because I know that they're going to put input, input, but I'm going to try the operation, which is the division, right? So I'm going to try to divide and then I am going to follow that up with a catch. Now, there are many exceptions, and we just saw a very specific one. We saw one that says system.divide by zero exception. You also have system.io exception. You also have system.array time mismatch exception. You have out of memory exception. You have a number of exceptions. Now, I'm not telling you to remember all of them. I'm just saying that there are a lot. So they all come from one base class called exception. All right. So when we just type exception, we can literally just cover every base and then we're just going to say exception E. So I'll explain what that E is. But when we say the keyword exception, it's like a base class that covers every type of exception. So no matter the type of exception that is caught, it will be caught by this class. Now you're probably wondering, okay, so why would I need to specify the type of exception? Well, there are times when based on the type of exception that is caught, you want to do something different. So like the divide by zero, you probably want to prompt them to enter a better denominator or not denominator, divisor, sorry. And if it is maybe a system.io exception, then you want to print something else. So you can actually have multiple catch blocks. So I'm just going to close the catch block. So that's what the try catch looks like. So when people talk about exception handling, or you hear somebody say try catch, this is what they're talking about. So you try an operation, you catch the error, and then you can actually catch many errors. So I can have multiple catches and each catch would just have a specific exception. So I can specify that I want the division by zero exception to be caught in this catch block. And then I can go on to say, well, actually the ordering here matters. So I'm sorry about that. If I'm going to be specific, then I have to do the specific ones before I catch exception, because then if I did catch exception before the divide by zero, then catch exception would have been catching any type of exception anyway, and it would never have gotten to the divide by zero, right? So that then the order matters. But like I was saying, if we just have exception, like Visual Studio just indicated, then we are catching all of the exceptions possible. Now, I did say I was going to explain the purpose of the E. So I had E and then I said EX and whatever. So this is pretty much just an object that represents the exception. So you notice when the exception message came up earlier, they had some details. It had a name, it had the content, it told us what the error was. So all of those you know, components, all of those bits of information, we can all collect them and store them inside of some variable or some object called E. And then that will allow us to, well, print out whatever we want. So let's say we tried this operation, all right? And then after trying the operation, we caught the exception that said um, division by zero. So when I catch that exception, I can choose to console dot right line and print out an error message, illegal operation. So instead of giving that nasty error where it stopped the operation and started telling us about system dot divide by zero dot this and that, because that means really nothing to a user, you can give a more elegant error message to say, hey man, you know, illegal operation, all right? So I'm going to try the operation, then print the result, and then I'm going to catch any error. And then I can say, finally, all right, console.write line. So I'll just do a quick console.write line and say, I just copied and pasted that, end of program. So remember that the finally will execute regardless of the try and the catch operation. So it's going to try this. If it's successful, then it's going to do this. Finally, if it tries it and there is an error that it's it catches, then it's going to still do this finally. So let's try that again. So we're going to do a good one, 10 and two, and then you see result and then end of program. So it tried it and then it did the finally. Let's try that again. So this time I'm doing 10 and zero, 
And then you see illegal operation. So it gave me my error message and then it still did the finally. So I'm going to kind of make the error message a bit more explicit now. So I'm going to say illegal operation and put a colon and let me just use interpolation because I'm going to be printing the actual error message from the exception. So exception is generic. Once again, I don't know if it's a divide by zero or system.io. Sometimes you get system.io exceptions and you have 20 different errors inside of that exception type. All right. So sometimes it is good to know the exact error that is being thrown so that you can um, be better at debugging the application because sometimes it's not deliberate. I'm being deliberate now, but a lot of the times we, we write code and we're not being deliberate with the errors and we're probably missing something. So I'm going to just say E dot and then I can say dot message. So E dot message is the actual message attached to the exception. So the expectation is that when the exception is thrown or caught rather, we're going to print illegal operation colon and then the actual error message. So let's try that again. So 10 and zero once more. And then we're seeing here illegal operation colon. And then they're giving us the message attached to the exception, which is that we attempted to divide by zero. So that's a nice way to handle errors. And then once again, the final will still execute and as it will do what it needs to do now. We did say there's a keyword called throw and the throw, and I'm going to have to put the throw above this console that right line. Notice how it, it kind of becomes dull now. And if I hover over it, then it's going to be telling me that it is unreachable. See, it says unreachable code detected because the fact is that the throw is just going to kill the program right there. All right. So when I say try and then catch exception, if I say throw, then it just kills the operation. There is no elegant error message. And uh, let's even test to see if there is even a finally. So I believe there is a finally, but let's just validate that. So 10 and zero once more. And then you see it just goes straight to the throw. So it just stops the program, comes to the throw. And I mean, Visual Studio is showing us what the problem is but then if your console application is not executing inside of visual studio then there is there's none of this screen for the user all right so it would just exit the program and they would never know why it exited the program all right and well there's the unhandled exception something and this is the error message that would come up for that user if we used throw. So once again, exception handling is about watching for particular types of errors and handling them elegantly.